Hey, welcome back. I recently posted a video about how to use a temporary access pass in Azure Active Directory to get a new employee up and running on their FIDO2 security key and their new Windows laptop on their first day of employment. In today's video, I'm gonna take that a step further by showing you even a more secure method than that by combining the temporary access pass with conditional access and with device compliance and a little bit of Windows Autopilot to take that a step further. So first I'm gonna show you the end user experience and then we're gonna jump into the admin side on how to get all of this configured properly. So let's jump in. Okay, so we're gonna start off by logging into aka.ms slash mysecurityinfo. We're gonna do that from a personal device. Now what I wanna show you here is when I attempt to sign in from that personal device, it's actually gonna block my access because the device is not compliant. So give me one second here to copy in the tap. So there's the tap. And don't wanna stay signed in, don't remember. Now it looks like I'm gonna be signed in, but stand by and there you go. Now it redirects and says, my device is not compliant. You need to basically join the device to Microsoft Endpoint Manager or a Microsoft Endpoint Manager partner, compliance partner. Uh, to be able to proceed. Now, what else is interesting is that if I try to log into any other tools, maybe Teams or Microsoft Office 365 as an example, that would also be blocked as well because my device is not managed nor compliant. So now let's jump over to using TAP with the Windows device that the IT department just shipped me. Okay, so now I'm on the computer that the IT department just shipped the new employee, turn it on for the first time. And as it goes through the out-of-box experience, I will land on this page. Now in the previous video, I told you to sign in with a security key, but here we're just gonna sign in using the email address that was issued to the end user. So I'm just going to type that in. And then it's gonna enter the temporary access pass. And click sign in. And so at this point, Windows Autopilot will take over and we'll start to automatically set up the device and push down all the apps and settings to it securely. So let's give this a few moments and we'll come back once we land on the Windows desktop. Now that the device is provisioned, corporate apps and settings and policy have been pushed down, I can go ahead and launch Edge and now try to browse to aka.ms slash mysecurityinfo to register that FIDO2 security key. Now, because the device is in a compliant state and it's managed, it's gonna allow me access as what you saw before, when trying to access from a non-managed, non-compliant device, it denied access. And then from here, I can go ahead and add that security key or I can register uh, the Authenticator app. Okay, now that you had a chance to see what the end user experience is like, let's jump into the admin side of this and I'll show you how to get this properly set up and configured. And I'll give you some more background information as well. Okay, so let's get started by going to intra.microsoft.com. And within the Microsoft Intra portal, we're gonna click on Azure Active Directory on the left and then click on Users, User Settings. Down the middle here, Manage User Feature Settings. And we're gonna make sure Combined Security Information Registration Experience is put to All. And then click Save. Now my tenant's a brand new tenant and it's automatically enabled for new tenants. That's why this is grayed out. But in your tenant, you may have to choose All and then click Save. Now you could also do it for selected users as well. And there's some documentation out there that explains why you may wanna do that. The next thing we want to do is go look at our conditional access policies. So under protect and secure, click on conditional access. And I've created two, two conditional access policies here. The first one is for all users. Now I could certainly exclude an admin or specific roles if I wanted to, but for all users, when they try to do a user action of register security information, in other words, go to aka.ms slash my security info page, then apply to controls, apply multi-factor authentication, which a temporary access pass will satisfy that. 
and then require device to be marked as compliant, which means the device must be managed by Microsoft Endpoint Manager and in a compliant state by adhering with the compliance policy that you've created. Now, if I'm using a third party uh, solution, that third party solution, if it's a partner, uh, if it's a compliance partner with Microsoft Intune, that compliance state can also be reported as well. See my previous video above for more information on that. And then I just have this set to require all selected controls, and then I have it turned on, and that is that first conditional access policy. The second one is require MFA for Azure AD join devices. So applying to all users, and when they try to do user action of register or join devices, apply MFA, require it, and make sure it's turned on. And so that helps to safeguard uh, against, against those types of uh, risks and threats. Now, I could create a third policy where I then require com device compliance for any, app, any cloud resource or application that's trying to be accessed. Uh, and that way that would further limit how that temporary access pass could be used. So that's optional here, uh, but I'm not gonna do it for this video and purposes of this demonstration. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, down here, we're gonna go to authentication methods under policies, temporary access pass. And just like I showed you in the previous video, uh, you're gonna have this enabled. I'm gonna target to all my users in my environment and I can configure the policy here for it. And then I'm gonna go over to users, all users, browse to my new hire employee, and then click on authentication methods and then I'm gonna create a temporary access pass. So let me go ahead and delete that and create a new one. I could tell it one time use and there's the tap password. And now I could use that to sign in to Windows just like you saw in the demo. Now we're done with Microsoft Intra. So now we're gonna go over to Microsoft Endpoint Manager and within Microsoft Endpoint Manager on the left side, click on Devices. And then we're gonna click down at the bottom here, we're gonna click on Enrollment Device Platform Restrictions and click on the Windows tab. Now I created a device type restriction where I'm actually blocking personal owned devices. So if we go into this policy here, personal owned devices is set to block. So if it's a device that um, is not, uh, if the serial number of the device is not registered with Windows Autopilot, then don't allow the end user to enroll the device is essentially what this is saying. So that means only devices that are corporate owned and that have been whitelisted can be Azure AD joined. So then up here at the top, we're gonna scroll, we're gonna go back to devices here. We're gonna click on enrollment. And then down at the bottom, I'm gonna create a Windows Autopilot deployment profile. And here you can see I just created a generic profile uh, for Windows Autopilot, nothing, nothing special here, just user-driven, and I'm hiding some of the privacy pages and, and software terms and conditions. And then back on the Windows Enrollment screen, we're gonna click on Devices under Windows Autopilot. And here you can see my device that has been registered with the Autopilot service. And if we click on it, I've also assigned it to my new hire, Matt. And so this is how the system is aware of that device. And this is that white listing of the, the, the serial number, the hardware ID, if you will, of that device. So really interesting here. So folks, this is how I could apply security uh, throughout so that that temporary access pass can only be used on that compliant device. And that compliant device can only be joined to Azure AD if it's part of the autopilot program. Um, and conditional access provides additional restrictions around all of this. Okay. Now I wanna take a step back here for a moment and I wanna talk about how I got this idea. Okay, so let's talk about how I came up with this idea for today's video. So when I posted my other video on password lists and new employee experiences, and you can see up above for the link to that, I posted it on LinkedIn as well. And one of you reached out to me with some feedback and suggested a different approach. And so I got permission here from Philip Bergman to use his name and his comment in today's video because I really wanted to share with you. And then I used that feedback to then create today's video. So Philip told me on LinkedIn, hi Matt, in my honest opinion, there is a better approach. 
Issue the tap and instruct the new employee to go through out-of-box experience by using the UPN and tap. And since tap satisfies multi-factor authentication, you can even require MFA for joining a device to Azure AD, which I showed you how to do that in the settings today. Wait for the device to get compliant and then go to the security info page and set up FIDO2. The only thing I didn't show you today is how to create that compliance policy, but see my other videos where I've shown you that. So this has the following advantages. An attacker would need the tap and a device with an allow listed hardware hash to set up MFA. Well, that's where Windows Autopilot came in and that's where we restricted uh, Azure D join to only Windows Autopilot devices that have that hardware hash or that serial number. And in your approach in the previous video, just getting access to the new employee's personal email is enough. So in my previous video, I talked about how that temporary access pass could be emailed to an employee's personal email or texted or written down in a post-it note or whatever, right? So Philip's talking about how this can be further protected with autopilot and then taking conditional access, you can protect the security info page with conditional access and require the device to be compliant to access it, which I showed you how to do that. And then now you don't need a personal device to register that FIDO2 security key like you did in my previous video. So Philip, thank you so much for this incredible, amazing, brilliant feedback. I love it and inspired me to do today's video. So thank you for that. And for any of you watching, if you have feedback or additional ideas on this topic, please, by all means, put them in the comments down below. I do read them. And uh, who knows, maybe I might use that feedback for a future video. Okay, hey, if you found value in today's video, please give me a thumbs up because that really helps me out. And please be sure to subscribe because I'm posting new videos almost every day and you don't wanna miss those. All right, hope you have a great rest of the day. Take care, we'll catch you in the next video.